Rage of the Gladiator was one of the best hidden gems on the Nintendo Wii. It was essentially a punch-out style fighter with various characters from Roman mythology making up its roster. A few years later, it would make the move to the 3DS and once again see you taking up the fight as Gracias, a young prince who is wrongly accused of a crime he didn't commit. Now the story is incredibly light, but just as with any game, it's all about the gameplay. And with Rage of the Gladiator, it's a pretty simple affair, with the action taking place from a first-person perspective. As the player, you get a weapon, a shield, and a selection of charms which add special abilities or stat boosts to your character. You can attack your opponent by either catching them off guard after they attack, or by finding their various tells that leave them open. If you successfully knock them out three times, you win the match. Whether or not you win the fight, you gain gold, which can be used for various upgrades. You can buy new weapons, shields, and potions, and also spend them on skill points, which give you special magic spells or allow you to upgrade abilities such as damage, health, auto-blocking, and much more. There is a serious amount to this game, and while it may not look that deep on the surface, don't let its rather simple setup fool you. If you missed out on the original release, this version is a solid choice. It does perform slightly worse than its console counterpart, and fighting the same opponents on each difficulty level can get a bit annoying. But despite these small flaws, it doesn't change the fact that it's still an excellent game in its own right. If there was one game on the 3DS which deserved way more attention, it had to be Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. The first thing to note about the game is the jolly and often hilarious banter Rusty cooks up throughout the game. You see, he's opened a store, but it hasn't gone exceptionally well. His sales are down, and even Rusty's wife has left him, so it's up to the player to help turn his fortunes around. Now, the game was essentially available as a free download and offered the player the option of acquiring several mini games to complete the package. What made it unique, though, is that by completing actions within the game, it was possible to get the minigames at a discounted price. The games each have a charm and appeal of their own. You'll be batting, catching, and even umpiring in the various minigames. Two of them are even more unique, and among the less popular, Batmaster has you customizing and testing your own bat, which you can use in any other portion of the game. Gear Games has you using the gyroscope to balance and bounce balls on your bat, or using the touchscreen to scrub your mitts. You can unlock high score derbies in all but Batmaster and they are addicting, endless minigames where you just try for a high score. Before that, you have a battery of challenges that involve basic skills to volleying, shooting stars, hitting meteors out of the sky, or playing hot potato with two bats and a bomb. This adds up to a serious amount of content. You truly will find yourself wasting hours trying to beat them all. Just one more round is something you'll be muttering to yourself a lot whilst playing this game. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is definitely a fun and enjoyable game in the long run. But the rather confusing way of acquiring more content in the game is something that definitely hurt it on release. That said, you probably won't find another game on the system that possesses this amount of charm. The Ace Combat series is one that has not appeared that much on Nintendo platforms. Despite all the context and mission briefings you can opt to sit through, the story of Ace Combat 3DS is quite simple. You play as Phoenix, an up-and-coming pilot for the Allied Forces. At the start of each mission, you're given a briefing by your commander, and from there you can choose a plane to move out in. These planes are based off real-world aeroplanes designed by Boeing and other popular manufacturers. At first, you have a limited selection of aircraft to select from, but as you complete missions on the various difficulties, you earn new planes. Of course, everything costs points. This goes for new crafts, new weapons such as bombs that can be dropped on ground forces, and upgrades for your various planes. Each plane has different attributes. Some are better at defense, some are better at maneuverability, some are better at speed, and so forth. Now, despite the game only having 21 bite-sized missions, you cannot play them all in one playthrough. There are at least three points in the story where you must choose between two mission arcs. No matter which path you decide on, you all always end up at the same place by the end of the game. Thankfully, there are three difficulties to select from as well. Multiple medals to earn through completing goals like downing 200 enemies, or beating the game on hard, or achieving an S rank on every mission. And as you progress through the main campaign, you'll unlock extra modes as well, which really help push the replay value. Ace Combat on the 3DS is impressive to look at. The stereoscopic 3D is amazing, and makes the aerial encounters all the more engaging on the ice. Some of the ground textures when you're close to them are a bit muddy, but everything else from the environments to the special particle effects and explosions to the sun and sparkling on the ocean make for some very nice visuals. If you're a fan of the series, this one is a no-brainer.
Creating a Gears of War like cover shooter for the Nintendo 3DS seemed quite unconventional at the time, but that's just what VD Dev did with Ironfall Invasion, featuring both local and online multiplayer as well as an 11 stage campaign. The project seemed fairly ambitious for the handheld. Now, in terms of story, it's pretty bare bones and sees the player taking on the part of a heavily armored soldier who's sent to try and stop an invasion of aliens. It's nothing that's going to win any awards and is simply there to facilitate the gameplay, and this is where where Ironfall succeeds. If you have a Circle Pad Pro or a new 3DS, you're going to feel right at home with Ironfall, as it functions just like a full-on console shooter. The controls work especially well on the new 3DS, with extra shoulder buttons for sprinting and reloading, as well as the C-Stick functionality for aiming. L aims, R shoots, and B ducks into cover. That's basically all you need to know, and it plays out wonderfully. Ironfall has a neat mechanic that ties actions to your health by the way of a meter called heart rate. There are certain fresh you cannot cross unless you take damage, but sprinting and shooting will raise your heart rate ever so slightly, forcing you back into cover to lower it faster. While it may seem like an action hindering design choice, it actually makes things more strategic as avoiding enemy fire altogether will inherently limit your meter. There's no denying that Ironfall is quite the technical achievement on the 3DS. Unfortunately though, it just doesn't do much to help it stand out amongst the games that have clearly inspired it. But overall, it's still worth a fair shake and would make for a solid option if you fancy playing something new on the handheld. It's a shame that God of Protectors is so easily overlooked, because it's stuffed with nostalgia pandering, charm and enough self-deprecating and referential humour that it really deserves to be played. The basic gameplay is simple, protect the princess in the middle of the castle by building and maintaining barriers and defeat the oncoming enemy horde. The princess is a unit that remains stationary, healing you and refilling your MP if you get close enough, but she can also be pushed out of harm's way. Barriers can be built and upgraded ranging from simple parts of sticks to steel walls and can be repaired by using your basic attack. You can also level up your character by returning to the castle which makes you into a more formidable fighter and gives you access to higher level skills. All of these actions cost money though, which can be picked up from defeating the enemy or opening chests around the map. There is a balancing act however, because you can also upgrade your castle, princess, shop and dojo so that they'll offer up better upgrades. If you spend it all in the fight, you'll have none left to prepare for the next. Fruit can also be picked up during battle, which is the currency you use to actually purchase weapons and upgrade the skills of the various classes. Speaking of, there are several different classes ranging from your normal fighter to a ninja who wears nothing but a leotard and an old guy who's a tank type. Each of them have their quirks. The fighter's attacks are very strong but he moves and attacks slow, whereas the ninja's fast but his attacks aren't as powerful and he lacks defense as well. These are all elements that are very simple but work together to create something that doesn't feel shallow. It's an absolute love letter to the NES era and I highly recommend and giving it a chance. Codename Steam is a strange game you wouldn't expect coming from a Japanese developer, one based on the art style of American comics rather than manga, with a steampunk setting. It has more than a passing resemblance to the setup of XCOM and sees aliens invading the earth and a group of special soldiers being formed to combat the threat. It plays like a light version of Valkyria Chronicles, one of my better like strategy games. It turns out that the game, while still having its flaws, is extremely underrated, and it's the gameplay that truly steals the show. There's one major caveat however, a patch shortly after release added a fast forward button for enemy turns that only works on the new 3DS systems. This significantly improves the gameplay in my opinion, so people who still have an original 3DS may feel a bit left out, but it's not a complete deal breaker. That said, the game allows you to pick several characters, outfit them with side weapons to complement their unique main weapon, and give them a steam boiler that lets them move, perform actions, and replenishes every turn. The game's maps are close quarters, intense and very strategic. Enemies, as well as your own troops, can use overwatch attacks that continue into the enemy's turn, forcing you to play more carefully or risk being ambushed. However, one annoying issue is that the best abilities tend to be given to the worst characters. It would have made a lot more sense if you could just equip abilities instead. That's not to say the battles ever feel unfair, as strategically planning each and every move is far more important than individual abilities anyway. Although it never reaches the highs of the Fire Emblem or Advance Wars series for that matter, Codename Steam is still a respectable game that is well worth adding to your 3DS collection. 
starting as a manga in 1984 and then releasing as a video game for the PS1 in 1996, North America and Europe wouldn't see their first release until 2005 on the PSP. Now Return to Papa Locris merges itself with the Story of Season series which was formerly known as Harvest Moon to some spectacular results. The adventure starts off in the main town where you play as Prince Pietro, a 13 year old pure hearted boy who has already saved the kingdom from evil once. Unfortunately peace doesn't last forever as evil once again creeps back into the town and this time the soil becomes tainted resulting in the village not being able to grow food. This prompts our hero to set out and get to the bottom of the mysterious curse which sees you travelling the entire kingdom for answers. As with any RPG, new characters are introduced throughout the story along with the original cast from the first game. Each of them have their own distinct characteristics accompanied by great voice acting which makes cutscenes enjoyable to watch. But just like any other RPG, the most important aspect is the battle system. When you're not busy tending to your crops, you'll most likely find yourself here, knee deep in enemies and taking advantage of a surprising amount of options that help streamline each encounter. As you would expect, you've got your standard attacks, item uses and special abilities to help even the odds. But if I'm being honest, there's just not that much difficulty present within the game. These moments are saved for the far more challenging boss fights, which really see the various systems in play come into their own. On the whole, Return to Papa Locris is an RPG that can be enjoyed by any age group. The simple and light-hearted presentation goes a long way in creating something memorable for both fans of the original games and newcomers alike. Moon Chronicles was a ground up remake of an FPS game that originally released on the DS. The 3DS version was split up into several episodes, with the first introducing players to Major Kane, the leader of a special task force sent to investigate a mysterious hatch located on the moon, which suggests an alien presence. Now the first thing you'll notice is the rather old school approach to the game's design. Regenerating health and auto saving at checkpoints are nowhere to be found. Instead the game can be saved at certain predetermined and points throughout the course of each level, which really helps amp up the stakes. As you would expect, you require plenty of weaponry to take on each challenge that comes your way, as well as several items such as a small robot companion which can be used to scout out areas ahead and even stun enemies from afar. Now the levels consist of a series of rooms connected by tunnels. The rooms range in a variety of sizes and shapes, but a helpful map will keep you heading in the right direction. Combat in these cramped tunnels can seem daunting at first, so learning to bob and weave is essential. The player will have to entice the enemy to fire at one spot then strafe away when the attack gets close. Learning how to do this is essential or the enemies will tear the player a new one. The visuals received an update from the DS version as well, yet the CGI cutscenes look like they were ripped straight from the DS game without any touch up. On the other hand, the graphics look great and the upgrade is noticeable in game. Overall Moon Chronicles is by no means the best FPS on the 3DS, but it's definitely a game worth checking out especially for fans of the genre. Dylan's Rolling Western is a rather unique action game that mixes in several strategic elements like tower defense to create something new. It has a fairly simple but interesting story. Dylan and his squirrel friend Russ are young wannabe rangers, and while traveling they come across a town in need of help. The mayor there tells them that they breed scrocks, which serve as a large source of income for the town. Unfortunately, it's now being harassed by creatures known as grocks, which sees Dylan and Russ agreeing to help get them under control. It sees you having to protect each village from the Grox for three separate days. During the daytime you can explore the map, mine for ore and items or look for treasure and acquire scrogs for the village, all the while tending to the gun and watchtowers scattered throughout the map. When night falls you need to roll around the map and defeat all of the Grox before they destroy all of your defenses and eat the scrogs you've managed to acquire. Naturally there's a few ways to do this but it's mainly achieved through one of Dylan's special abilities. You've got four main attacks, the roll, the grind, the slash and the charge attack. You Utilizing all four of them and understanding which one to use at the right time is at the center of the fighting. After an encounter, you can upgrade these attacks by buying better equipment but to add to the difficulty, this equipment will break after a number of uses. This forces the player to stay on their toes and make decisions that have real consequences in the moment. The only complaint I have about this game is that the difficulty curve hits hard, like a literal kick in the teeth. Be ready to replay all the levels to earn more stars or levels you're stuck on to rethink strategy over and over again. So if you're up for the challenge and never got around to playing this one the first time around, Dylan's Roland Western is well worth checking out for yourself.
Fantasy life grabbed me straight away and pulled me into its world like few other 3DS games have. Right from the start, I got addicted to the freedom to do whatever I wanted to do and to go wherever I felt like going. Instead of fretting about which class I should play or where I should spend my points, I could just start playing without a worry because you can do everything with the same character and there is no way that you can mess it up. Even if you misplace your stat points or change your mind later, you can eventually respec and reset all of them. Now the story is not particularly complex or original, though I found it entertaining enough. It serves the purpose of introducing you to the world and the lore, but it's definitely on the light side. So if you're looking for a complex plot with many surprises, this game won't offer it. On the other hand, if you're looking for solid gameplay, Fantasy Life has it by the bucket load. It somewhat resembles Room Factory, but is a little heavier on the action. The combat is in real time, almost Zelda-esque, but it's not overly complicated or even twitchy. Monsters and gathering nodes respawn, so you can farm as much as you want. And there are no real death penalties, which makes the game easy and forgiving, but it's really all about leveling your lives or jobs, unlocking recipes, doing challenges, and getting the best equipment you can. For me, Fantasy Life is one of the best games the system has to offer. It came out of the blue was a complete surprise to me. So if you like Room Factory or similar games but always wish they were a bit heavier on the action, Fantasy Life is right up your alley. Well that does it for today's video, keep an eye out for part 2 as that will be coming up soon, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified about new videos, which release every Tuesday and Friday. You can follow me on all of the socials to stay up to date and also join my growing community on Discord to meet many like-minded gamers to continue the conversation with. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Rhino, Skill Jim, Nano, Steve, Richard, Amy, Daniel, Paul, Dio, Alex, Pierre, Carl, Strider and Paddy J for their continued support that helps make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining my Discord or supporting my channel through Patreon, you'll find all of those links in the description. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video, I'll catch you next time.